Made it a cheese and bologna, Supergirl. Made it a cheese and bologna, fighting for her life with the rubber knife. Welcome to Nerd Hurdles. Welcome to Nerd Hurdles, the podcast that talks to you quiet and slow. My name is Jacob, your name is Mandy, and we talked about some Marvel properties last time. Marvelous properties? Yes. Uh, Luke Cage and Deadpool. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about some DC properties it's this a blue, time. It's a blue pill day. Right. Explain that as it's, you're not talking about a, like, uh, a Matrix thing? Or, or a MRA thing. That's an MRA thing? Yeah, they adopted the Matrix thing. Like, if you've opened your eyes to the, to the matriarchy, it's like the red pill, I think. See, the thing that's stupid about the red pill and the blue pill is nobody fucking remembers which pill does what. <laughs> yeah. Only Matrix fans, like... Only MRAs. Which are, are MRAs. Like, those are the only people, I think, that are, like, really into the Matrix still at this point. Because of the trench coats. Yeah, and the fedoras. I think there's probably some fedoras in that movie. Although I can't actually remember anybody wearing fedora, one. Fedora, fedora. It's a fedora. What's under the fedora? It's a fedora. A banana. Do you think anybody in writing about MRAs has use the title for their article opening the fedora's box no it's not that good is it no i no. think that people... it would seem better in my head before i said it out loud <gasps> do you know what i just realized singing the fedora song is that owl pump yard i'm not going to be able to go back and watch their vines no but no are it's are they gonna is pornhub saving them well i'm pretty sure owl pump yard there's like there's probably compilations on on youtube probably Oh my god, Owl Pump Yard's so great. This is a Viner we're talking about on the... I like that you're like, this is a Viner. I'm like, no, no, there's two of them. (laughs) There's the chicken and the guy. Well, it is two people. Yeah, yeah. On the soon-to-be-extinct Vine app, perhaps, since uh, Twitter or whoever sold it off and maybe Pornhub is going to ridiculously carry it on, but without the, uh, the restrictions on nudity and sex and stuff. Owl Pump Yard is my favorite Viner. Yeah. But they haven't put anything out in a long time. No. Oh, so good. Um, But we were talking about MRAs and the blue pill and the red pill. Yeah. So it's a meme and the blue pill is DC, Star Trek, and Game of Thrones. And the red pill is Marvel, Star Wars, and Walking Dead. Most people that I saw commenting on it, I don't know who had posted it. Right. Somebody that we know. Robert Taylor, I would assume. Maybe. Um, everybody or most people were picking Blue Pill. Yeah, because Walking Dead is like so phenomenally bad. It's that awful. It couldn't, doesn't matter what else you put in, in that pill, people are not going to pick it. Walking everything Dead else, is a tough pill to swallow. Everything else is more or less equally enjoyable. No way. Star Wars is not greater than Star Trek. Well, it might be greater than DC. I mean, if you're just talking about, it's like a Halloween candy selection, like... Star Wars and Marvel, that, that's fine. It's, you know, those are some tasty ones. You got the the, the gross. Yeah, but I'm not living dead, in a world gonna... where I don't get Star Trek Halloween candy. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's true. It's the Wonder Bar of Halloween candy. No, it's the Reese Pumpkin of Halloween candy. No, I think Walking Dead is the Reese Pumpkin Fuck of Halloween you, candy. Fuck you, man. No, you're wrong. No, I, mm. <laughs> I guess I actually, mm. people are going to think, we, we recorded this before Halloween. We this, didn't. No. We just is... ate a lot of Halloween candy. It's still <laughs> fresh in our minds. Yeah, I guess Walking Dead is actually like the Halloween kisses, molasses kisses candy. No, it's not. It's oh, more yeah, like... yeah, you like that too, right? What is it like? It's like something that people don't hate so much. It's more like meh. Right. Like what a... would that be? Like the... But those mini... mini... Smarties. I feel like Smarties. Smarties yeah. Or Rockets. No, people hate Rockets too much. Yeah. Because um, they're crazy. Rockets are delicious. To clarify for American listeners, what we in Canada call Smarties are candy-covered chocolate drops something like M&M's. And Rockets are the rolls of pastel-colored chalky sugar candies which you call Smarties. Trying to think. Plain potato chips. Yeah. (laughs) That was always kind of a disappointment. It was like, plain. I always gave all the licorice to my mom and all the peanuts to my dad. Yeah, Halloween licorice. peanuts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I used to hate licorice, though. Like, Yeah. I always found like Halloween licorice was like usually almost rock hard. That's the best kind of licorice. My mom buys licorice, opens it, and then leaves it in the cupboard for like weeks and then eats it. Oh, it needs a little bit of curing. It needs to get a little bit stale because it's whether it's black licorice or red licorice or anything. Ew. But 
black licorice needs to you buy black licorice you open it you put it in the cupboard and you never eat it you and then you take it out of the cupboard because it's stinking everything up and light it on fire at any rate um yeah so we're gonna talk about some dc properties some blue pill elements yeah yeah um actually i think we need to talk about star trek too did we already talk about how I feel about the song now? Yeah, we talked about how... They, they ruined it? They ruined the Enterprise. They ruined the song! I'm you still know. mad! <laughs> As you should be. It's it's pretty terrible. Oh, it makes me sick to my stomach just thinking about how ruined it is. Um, We're going to talk about <sighs> Gotham, Gotham and Supergirl. Supergirl we're made not, out of cheese and bologna. We're Supergirl. Not, we're not going to talk about... um the flash or green arrow because we've never seen any of those and there's only going to be some season one spoilers for supergirl so if you're just watching it now that it's come to netflix you could get spoiled. but if you're just a regular human then there's no spoilers we might talk about the big season two spoiler oh yeah we might just because we know because it was like all over the interwebs and obvious yeah and retrospectively pretty obvious I've been, I've been trying to, I've been looking at it and being like, yeah, I don't, I don't see it. But, uh, let's talk about Gotham first. So, so we watched it. Right. Gotham. I like Gotham. You, you started watching Gotham on your own. It was your yeah. alone show for a while. Yeah. You were, you were off at a meeting or something and I was like, watched the first episode and I was like, oh, this is good enough to watch, but kind of shitty. So I can watch this without Mandy. I mean, she, she, she isn't really into like superheroes and batman and stuff and you know which is insane because i don't even think that's true well i don't know it was was how i i uh rationalized rationalized it in my head man and you did i realize now that you did start to feel guilty about it yeah you start to feel bad well as it keeps getting better and better i'd be like like and then it was like season two came on netflix and i was like oh i was gonna suggest that we rewatch season one Mm mm-hmm because I'd kind of actually forgotten a lot of what happened in season one. But then, again, you went away somewhere, and I was like, well, I guess I'll start in season two. And then, Or no, the baby happened. And Damn, that baby. You, you were sleeping while I was staying up with the baby a little right. bit at night. Right, It was what our original, while I was on leave, yeah. um, our original um, schedule. And uh, so I started watching it. Do you really say schedule? Instead of schedule? Yeah. I say schedule. Yeah. What? I what? shed no tears over this decision of mine. Hey, no, you don't have to schedule any <laughs> tears. It's just uh, weird. Um, so then I started to watch it. Well, I was what was I watching? Oh, I was trying to find something to watch while I was yeah. feeding the baby in the middle of the night. I was watching something terrible, Vampire Diaries, I think. Like, yeah. Which is unwatchable. And I was like, you should watch Gotham, because by this time I'd realized it was like one of my favorite shows and of, of all time, actually. Bad man. Yeah, I, I, I just like admitted to myself that it's up there for me with like, like Buffy or something, or maybe Angel. I don't know, something oh my like gosh, that. Gosh, I didn't realize that those shows are your favorite of all time how come you won't watch them anymore they don't age well in a way Ugh, I, never mind i didn't yeah. i didn't even ask you i don't want to know um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know it's just because i've seen like no no, no i don't want much, you to i don't want to hear you say bad things about i'm them. not saying bad things this no. is not not bad thing i don't want to no, hear it's it just, it's just it's just sort of like no matter how good the show is it's just after you've seen almost every episode more than once it's kind of like do i want to rewatch that or i'd, I'd yes. rather watch something shitty and new instead no. of go back Lee and TBJ are watching uh, Buffy right now, and right. they are going to do the sequential time oh, between Buffy the, Angel uh, watching. Right. It's good. It's a good way to do it. We never d- have done that. Yeah, I thought we did do it. It's no. but but not like starting right away. Like we kind of got into no, it didn't. halfway through watching Angel. We didn't because I, I'm sure we did. No, we didn't because we had watched Buffy all up. Well, and when, then we when, watched Angel way later, like years later. Yeah, but then we started watching, but we did them like both again. We know we never did them both again. Well, I've wa- I've done the sequential, and I could only have done that with you. We, you did not. We did not. We wanted Selena to do it. We wanted other people to do it because we never got the chance. I feel like we did some. We did a bit of a rewatch or something. So then I watched Gotham by myself in the night. Yeah. I was worried it'd be scary. You said it wasn't scary. It wasn't no, too scary. It was it's fine. Scary like Buffy. I mean, it's basically. I think what I like about Gotham, it was less scary than Buffy. There are some really scary episodes of Buffy. I think what I like about both Gotham and Supergirl is that they are quite Buffy-ish or Joss Whedon-ish. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Supergirl yeah. is for sure. Yeah. I mean, they have the Scooby Gang kind of thing going on, and it's a little brighter, lighter. It was less fantastical gotham has a very surreal mm-hmm. fantastical uh setting where it was supergirl's very 
It's just, just very light. Yeah, it's very light. All the episodes take place during the day almost. In Gotham, they almost always take place at night. Yeah. <laughs> and same with Buffy. Yeah. I mean, there's daytime, but I mean... Once they leave high school, not so much really. It was yeah. like almost all the daytime scenes were at school. And once they left school, it was like nighttime all yeah. the time. Usually indoors also. Not a lot of exterior scenes. It was like always at the vault or... What is it called? The crypt. Is that the name Mausoleum? of it? Mausoleum? What are you talking about? The oh, bar, the, the bar. bar. I thought you were talking about like where Spike lives. No, yeah. He, he's in the, here. I don't know. The vault sounds right, but I don't remember. No, the, oh, it's a, uh, oh, fuck. The, oh, shit, I almost had it. It's the something. The, yeah. oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. The bronze. The bronze, right. Woo-hoo! Yeah. I was going to say it's like the brass nail or something. Like, but that, <laughs> like what? What is, he, what is even that? But yeah, yeah. Like Gotham, it, well, it has that ensemble cast element. Mm-hmm. It has an ensemble cast, but it's not really an ensemble cast. It's more like a rotating cast, like a cast of characters. Because they don't really interact with each other very much. Like there's not yeah. that ensemble element in Gotham. Well, they're not a team because they're all fractured. They're all kind of mm. on their own penguins on his own so i can't don't think yeah. you can really have a fractured ensemble cast but they're an ensemble because as no, a but cast ensemble the, means together yeah but they are together they interact no. with each other they're just no. they're just not working together in, no on the same team no not an ensemble cast Puzz ensemble but i think it's ensemble cast because n- nobody is really the star I mean, sort of, uh, what's his, like, Jim Gordon's sort of, sort of the main character, but he's not really any more of a star of the show than the Penguin, Bruce, well, it's and because Alfred, he's the or, sort of straight man against yeah. whom all these amazing, fantastical characters yeah, kind he, of yeah. play off of. He's the everyman that, that you bounce off the insanity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's, who's your favorite? In Gotham. Gotham? Oh, Penguin. Yeah. And also... I like Ed. Ed Nigma is, is pretty great. But I didn't like him so much in the end. I liked him. Oh, after he became a psychotic killer. Yeah. Spoiler alert! Because <laughs> he was too cool then. Like, he, was, he wasn't he was nerdy enough. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely have, like, a huge penguin crush. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's bizarrely sexy. His hair's so cute. Yeah. His little... He has that, that boyish enthusiasm. Yeah. Earnest. He's earnest. I guess I guess that's what something about him. He's very earnest. Psychotic and bad, but yeah. He has that bad boy allure. I don't know if he has bad boy allure. Yeah, I guess. Well, other than just being a bad boy. But I don't feel that he is. Like, I don't yeah. feel like... Like, I think when people are bad boys, it's like they're being sort of counter... They're being dis- duplicitous, kind of. Well, like, they're doing it on yeah. purpose. They're like, yeah. oh, look, I'm bad. But he's it's just, just who he is. Yeah. yeah. It's just his way. He's just a guy that leaps out of a, a river and slashes the throat of the first person he sees. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he needed a sandwich. Yeah, and the guy's clothes, I think. Oh. Maybe as well. I can't remember. I don't remember. And he's a sharp dresser. That's one thing I like about Gotham is the costumes are great. Yeah. The cars. The cars are my very <laughs> favorite thing about Gotham. Oh, yeah. my God. Which probably in the production brief, it says shitty late 70s, early 80s sedans, gas guzzling sedans or something like that. And you're just like, you mean beautiful. My favorite <laughs> kinds of cars ever. Late 70s gas guzzling american oh. cars because listeners my first car was a 1977 buick lesabre yep. her name was beulah and uh, she was a beaut yeah when we say late 70s gas guzzling cars we're not talking about cool muscle cars no no <laughs> we're talking about the pimp Gr- wagons grandpa cars yeah the kind of cars that always got blown up in starsky and hutch or something like that caprice classic those are a classic haha <laughs> that's a good one yeah. Oh, I want a car like that so bad. I'm a parent now. I have to <laughs> think about safety. <laughs> Bullshit. Well, I don't know. There's, nothing can happen to somebody driving in one of those. That's not true. Yeah, I guess. I it's guess like, they probably crumble. They don't crumple. That's the problem. Oh, yeah. I guess, then, yeah then they you get shocked to yeah. death. You get shocked to death. You know, I feel like, remember how I was totally like, I was gonna buy like an old car? Yeah. I think that was the moment where I was on the fence between get a cool old car right. or make a baby. 
shit, I should have pushed you towards the, the old car. Hey, you're more. not allowed to say that now. <laughs> now that we're on the other side of it, you have to just pretend it's what you always wanted. No, this was my gift to you. Oh. If I had known, I could have spent $5,000 on an old car. Oh, you could have spent way less than that. Yeah, but it would have got you a nice one. Oh, got, whoa. Got, maybe got it painted in the shade of purple you wanted. Oh, my. Damn. <laughs> And another kitten? No. Oh. <laughs> well, then never mind. I'm happy with how things turned out. Because <laughs> I still got a new car. Yeah. So, Penguin. Yeah. So, so that's who you'd sleep with on Gotham. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of viable choices. You, but you don't, wouldn't really want to sleep with Penguin. Well, no. I guess well, that's I don't the think... thing about the game is I wouldn't really want to sleep with anyone we play this game with. No, no. But I don't think I'll see, also don't think Penguin would want to sleep with us. Like, he does seem to be asexual. Yeah. Which is part of the allure, I, I think. find also. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Well, like, maybe we could just, like, hang out. <laughs> yeah. We could, I guess it would be fun to hang out we with. We go to Snakes and Lattes and play some board games. And he's a really good friend. If yeah. he's decided that he's loyal. You're you're his friend. If you're if you're loyal to him. Yeah. I don't know. Jim's not that loyal to him and he keeps coming back for more. Well, but the Jim can give him things that he can't get from anywhere else. Yeah, I guess that's true. One thing you, you uh pointed out in one of the episodes we were watching, it was like the relationship between Bruce and Selena is actually compelling in this, as opposed to, you know, like every other time we've seen it on screen. Yeah. And I totally agree it's like it's actually interesting it's a really interesting backstory and it's interesting knowing like knowing what happens in the future makes what's happening now yeah interesting yeah that how oh, there's a why in the road coming yeah and they're already sort of on opposite sides of the street but they're going to take different streets eventually mm-hmm. you you keep wondering if this is it yeah is this it is this it but or you, or like you're wondering what what is it going to be like yeah. what's going to be the thing that really because they're they're sort of that magnetism and attraction to each other in something like the christian bale one it's sort of it never really like makes sense it's sort of like yeah she's an attractive lady bruce wayne's mm-hmm. an attractive guy batman's an you know attractive but d- is it imposing dude but, but batman it, and catwoman they always have a sexual attraction they do but but isn't it they're like real life people that have kind of like an actual thing going on and I, they're like I don't know. There's like a there's like a unresolved sexual tension between Batman yeah. and Catwoman. Yeah, between Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne. But it's usually like they've met in the beginning of the movie well, for the I'm first time. Well, I'm thinking of like the one with Michelle Pfeiffer. But, but again, the, no because uh, she didn't know Bruce Wayne at all until after she became Batwoman. Catwoman? Like Selena Kyle is like the the mayor well i know okay but i don't mean that they didn't know each other but i mean that in bruce wayne and selena kyle are like go on a date or something they're no that's vicky vale in in the first one uh okay well yeah that's not i don't i don't don't, don't think selena kyle and there's although there's usually a scene where they dance and they have that i think that that was what i was thinking of yeah where where they um have like that uh james bond and the whatever femme fatale kind of you know that that verbal sparring where they're like pretending like they do they're not who they are kind of thing right that's like a classic scene but it never really like kind of makes sense why he would like lets her go because they don't have that kind of like deep uh relationship in any of those movies why he lets her go well there's always some scene where batman she'll be like he he can like oh get her get her and then he lets her like jump out a window or something like that right and you're like well I don't really have that much of an an emotional tie. Like she's still just a criminal to Batman, isn't she? No, right. like like they have right, they, right, they, right. You've yeah. had this scene where that attraction, but it doesn't seem like enough for him to sell out his values. Mm-hmm. Whereas whereas in Gotham, it's like you could see it happening again yeah. and again. Yeah and, yeah, and you go like, well, you know, as adults, he would let her go because this is his childhood sweetheart kind mm-hmm. of thing. The thing that I'm really confused about in Gotham is that isn't Barbara Keane become Barbara Gordon? Well, I think and so. And how are we going to get there? I At the beginning, I was like, oh, it, she's going to be Barbara Gordon. And then, yeah. like, shit just started to get crazier and crazier. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. what? Well, I guess. Maybe it's a different Barbara. No, Barbara Keane is Barbara Gordon. Oh. Because yeah, I, I did look it up. <laughs> Barbara Keen Gordon is James W. Gordon's ex-wife. Her history and existence has been repeatedly retconned over the years. 
sometimes implying that she died in a car crash, other times that she left Gotham with James for Chicago. Because, hmm. of course, we don't re- read the comics. Right. You know, we're not down with all the lore, but... Well, I knew Barbara Gordon, though, just yeah. from watching Burt Ward at Adam West Batman. Yeah, yeah. That's where I get all my, my details. <laughs> it's the best Bat... It's the realest Batman. And that's one of the things I like about uh, Gotham is it is goofy. Mm-hmm. It's not the uh, Christian Bale serious trying well, to be comic realistic. Book-y. It's like we come. It 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 honors the source material. Yeah, exactly. It's not as campy as Adam West. It's about as, or maybe even a little more campy than the Tim Burton. Like it's not it's quite different. A, it's it's different. It's, it's, it's a campiness for today. Well, my second favorite uh, was always the the Tim Burton ones because they were still kooky. Yeah. And comic bookish and mm-hmm. painted in broad strokes. And, and that's what's great about, um, about Gotham is that it's like a comic book show. It's not a superhero show. It's a comic mm-hmm. book show. And they've and they've understood that, like whoever's behind it. It's cool. It's yeah. a cool idea. It's a good premise. Yeah. Certainly the only time I've ever been interested in, in Bruce Wayne as a character. Mm-hmm. He's boring normally. That kid, it, yeah. it's a well-played part. Mm-hmm. Like, like he's subtle. Yeah. He's good. Sometimes I kind of wonder if they just film him and then just get a, a variety of facial expressions and then cut that with him reacting to something. So is is he acting or do they do they just like confuse him with a bunch of like mathematical figures until he gets that look in his face? And then that they <laughs> pick whatever clip works best. Yeah. Well, that's not fair. Why can that kid not just be a good actor? I think he's a good actor. He's just... And I like Selena Kyle. Yeah. I think she's great. Yeah, I I was really disappointed that there was no mention of why her hair is suddenly straight and blonde in the last few episodes of season two. She just has some, like, hunks that are blonde, doesn't she? Well, she wore a hat for the whole time, so so she just has, like, this blonde, straight blonde hair coming out of her cap. Well, she got a new haircut, and she's not super comfortable with it yet. I was waiting for somebody to say, what, are you trying to look like Silver? What's going on? Who's Silver? It was the uh, Dumas girl. Right. That was trying to seduce Bruce. Duma. Yeah. Dumbass. Yeah. It's Nobody made that Dumas. joke. That's a, something like Harvey Bullock would have made that joke, I felt like. Yeah. But I guess he never had that Maybe he did and you just didn't notice. Maybe. Ah, uh, Harvey. But it's also what's good about uh, Supergirl is the, the comic bookness. My favorite thing about Supergirl is they keep like talking about white male privilege. <laughs> I'm like, what? There's a show that does this? This is kind of amazing. Yeah. There's a ton of shows about women now that i've never seen like mm-hmm. gossip girl or whatever i have no idea what they're like but oh, it's I the only show that gossip I, girl it's terrible yeah i haven't um but of all of all the shows i've seen it's the only one that's like overtly feminist or has feminist messages in it unapologetically yeah and they're they're just there you know they're just part of conversation mm-hmm. and it's like doesn't feel ham fisted in. Yeah, it and it doesn't to me. feel heavy handed either no. because they're just being upfront about it. Well, they're being really honest about it. It isn't, yeah. like, it isn't like uh, the um, issue of the week mm-hmm. kind of way that another show does it. And they're like, oh, we're going to do feminism. Like Star Trek? Yeah. And, they, and then somebody who's writing it doesn't understand feminism. So you're like, well, I don't, this doesn't make sense. You know, mm-hmm. it's like that's kind of off. You know, whoever's writing Supergirl definitely understands all the issues and understands all the, all the, uh, the, the nuances and all the rhetoric and, and how, how to talk, talk about, about it yeah. yeah and how you're supposed to talk about it and what is bullshit and what isn't and it just mm-hmm. feels very real you know and it feels honest because it's like stuff we would say yeah yeah <laughs> so i can totally see why 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 karen likes it so much mm-hmm. i think the thing i most i'm most disappointed in about supergirl is that win is in love with her instead of like her gay friend yeah yeah, because he wouldn't have been a good gay friend because he wouldn't, wouldn't be over the top. Mm-hmm. And just I'm a little really bit. worried that yeah. it's gonna what's gonna happen now that he's sort of revealed his feelings for her. Well, it was already sort of they did have that one disappointing dialogue. Uh, well, her yeah, and her sister. she was blaming herself for, and it seemed like that. Her, Alex, her sister, was was going to be like, no, no, no. You know, you know, mm-hmm. because it's kind of started, her response kind of started off like that. Yeah. And then she was just like, yeah, it's the way it is or whatever. And it's like, what? This is a perfect opportunity to say no. It's on him mm-hmm. if he feels bad. It's not your fault. It's okay you owe to him not nothing. like someone back. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's okay to be upset that, like, there's a strain on your friendship and, yeah. you know, to wish that it was easier and that you did just return his feelings. But mm-hmm. 
Because I guess we're about halfway through season one, so there's a lot we don't know yeah. well, what's going to happen. And I get, like I can see them wanting to sort of have this like love triangle thingy. But... Yeah, maybe I'm just a bit too old to be, like n- think that Jimmy Olsen is anything but a douchebag. Yeah, because he just seems to like that she likes him. Yeah, and he he doesn't really seem to honor his own relationship. He just goes along with it, kind yeah. of, or something. It's like, wow, this guy's an asshole. Mm-hmm. And he was so likable at the beginning, mm-hmm. you know, before he found out he had a girlfriend and, and stuff, you know, and he, he seemed like an honorable, cool guy. And then it's sort of like, yeah, this is... <laughs> it would just be better if, like, there wasn't any, any relationship stuff between the three of them at all no exactly if it was just like scooby gang yeah like xander and willow and buffy yeah i mean Although i guess, I guess xander were... did kind of yeah but they never took it too far like it just sort of you yeah know? Well, maybe that's kind of what they're trying to do to kind of a xander thing with win but uh, yeah it's totally different so it's not doesn't work in the it's, same yeah, way it's too much although xander is a total asshole that we grew to dis- hate, <laughs> anyways. We but, grew to uh, dishate. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Wayne is gonna go kind of MRA and turn into his dad. Maybe that is what the, what's gonna happen. Well, and maybe, maybe he's comic a villain book, that we don't know about yet. But comic book readers would, and they'd be like, "Oh, this is this is the seed," you know, kind of thing. Who knows? The seed. Like every time there's this, like something ridiculous comes up, like Red Tornado, it's like, well, this is clearly out of the comics. Because this is dumb. <laughs> the red Tornado is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Look out for my wind hands. <laughs> like, did his hand, I guess his hands had to, like, rotate to create the tornado. I don't know. It was just Well, why dumb. does he have to have a tornado anyway? That's, d- that's a stupid superpower. Yeah, it's just a kind of silly villain that kept me from reading, like, Superman comics as a kid. Mm. It's always why Superman seemed like the lamest superhero is because his villains were so lame. Meh. But I like really like the way they do it in um, Supergirl, where it's sort of like there's just a whole bunch of aliens. It's almost like a right. it's almost like a sci-fi show, an alien invasion sci-fi show kind of. But they're not there's not enough of them to be just like District Nine or whatever, where they've right, totally right. taken there's over just, the world. There's just all these. It's an odd assortment because they were all yeah. just on the prison ship. Yeah, yeah, and apparently they're all in California for some reason. But well, is that where it crashed? Yeah. <laughs> Well, why not go to another, you know, go to Europe, spread out a bit more. Because like, they're yeah. staying together. Yeah, I guess. That's that's your biggest qualm about... The, it's not even it's a qualm. It's just not believable. <laughs> it's not a qualm. I'm just like... <sighs> Watch out for my wind fingers. <laughs> I just feel like it's very American-centric. You know, like there should be a little more... A little more discussion about the 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 guy in Australia doing something. Look, at the guy all in we Russia. have is Wolverine. Just yeah. accept that that's all we have. <laughs> I mean, he's marvel. Be happy we have something. He doesn't live in that universe. It doesn't matter. You live in the universe where we have Wolverine. That's true. I'm Wolverine. <laughs> I'm Sabretooth. No, but yeah, I I like that. Like it's like a kind of more interesting than like. Well, I guess they have Lex Luthor. They just call him a Max Lord instead I'm like why aren't they calling him lex luther i'm like all oh, right because that's in superman <laughs> it, there's supergirl comic books that this is based on it's not just like superman made with a girl yeah no there's, there's comics i don't know when they started 60s or supergirl is the name of seven comic book series published by dc comics featuring various characters of the same name the majority of the titles feature superman's cousin kara zor the first series began publication in 1972 following a 44-issue run of Supergirl stories in Adventure Comics, ending with issue number 424 in October 1972. Definitely like Lisa Flockert's performance and character more than I expected to. Yeah, I think she's good. I like how, you know, the sort of cliched, tough woman boss character... But she acknowledges it. Yeah, she acknowledges that it's like an act. It seen some like clips before, like when it, the show f- first started airing or was about to. And, you know, her, her performance was like so over the top with her like Devil Wears Prada kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it was like, eh, that looks really bad. Did but, you watch the Devil Wears Prada? No, but I've seen clips of it. It just seems like an odd <laughs> movie to reference. I don't know. I was trying to think of that stereotypical businesswoman yeah. yelling at the assistants kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
That was my only reference point. I don't know what would be better, but I haven't seen Devil Wears Prada. It just seems yeah, like an odd choice. But yeah, but but in the show it works because it's a it's a front, it's a facade. Mm-hmm. You know, and then there's always scenes with her and Kara where it's being Kira. I feel like at first she called her Kara, and then yeah. she started to call her Kira. Yeah, and I wish she went back and forth between Kara and Kira more. Yeah, she seems to just be Kira now. Mm-hmm. I was a little disappointed. It bothers me that her that she's Kara, that her name is Kara and not Kara. Okay. Why? (laughs) I think because I always like read it. Oh. And I always read it as Kara. Right. Who pronounces that name Kara? I don't know. It's awful. We have a friend named Shara, not Shara. That is not the same same name. Combination of letters. No. Well, the last three could be Ara or Era. Lots of people call her Shara if they just looked at her name. Listen, you're wrong. I'm right. <laughs> Kara is stupid. Yeah. Well, call her Kira then. No, I want to call her Kara. We'll call her Kara. <laughs> I want everyone to call her Kara mm. and uh, for that to be your name. Did you see the thing that Karen posted where she said that for Halloween she should be Karen Danvers and um oh wait a minute. Now I don't remember what she said. <laughs> Karen Danvers and Kat Gantz. Uh, that's what it was yeah but i didn't i didn't know who the character who those people were at the time right and then when we started watching it i was like oh yeah karen danvers and then i guess my brain just shut off and i'll be like and rachel will be that girl that looks like rachel (laughs) right (laughs) karen does have a type karen does have a type and it's alex danvers it's alex danvers (laughs) and rachel yeah and roll aaron and sarah siddle yeah and oh monica monica geller yeah oh yeah courtney cox that was her first love it was courtney cox i believe so in what in friends bruce springsteen video all right <laughs> um and uh nev campbell oh yeah nev campbell rachel uh, can never get a different haircut let's make a picture of all of <laughs> all of karen's loves all together karen should just do that come on karen yeah. that's the kind of thing you'd do why haven't you done that yet you yeah. probably have make a blog post about your what type what you do is get take all their faces and run them through that software where it like merges all those faces and then you come up with the mean face and see if the mean image oh is, the mean yeah not the mean no not not, not the nasty yeah, but yeah. like the, the, the mean the, image the 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 uh, averaged and it should be the ultimate love of her life and see if it looks like rachel at it all. will <laughs> the hair will for sure yeah they all have the same haircut adjusting for for the style of the year slightly i just want to see all those women's faces all in one place <laughs> <laughs> or to do uh to those videos where they like fade in and out of each oh, other's faces yeah, yeah. like the michael jackson video yeah yeah. Although it would be like very less subtle. extreme. It would probably be very relaxing. Just this, this, this. Uh, when you just said very re- relaxing, your eyes did this thing where one closed kind of and the other one fluttered. Like, <laughs> it was like, whoa, you're super relaxed over there. <sighs> yeah. It just mm-hmm. like quill after, after a full bottle. Yeah. Of formula and milk, not alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> a 40. Yeah, so, so so you were like, even though obviously we haven't seen season two, you were like, oh yeah, it's, it's quite obvious that Alex is going to turn out to be gay. Spoiler alert! <laughs> well, I don't know that I was like that. I think yeah. I just, she just seems gay to me. Oh, okay. But when I saw a thing that was like, it's a, someone comes out, I was right. like, oh, please let it be win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I just assumed myself. Uh, and then when I saw who it was, I was like, oh, right, obviously. Yeah, of course, like, yeah, yeah. Why else would Karen love this show so much? Well, Karen, <laughs> I think, was displeased with how they did that or something about it. I well, don't it know sounds, why. It sounds like Alex has doubts. Like, she, this is something that's blossoming inside her. Not oh. not just, oh, yeah, no, I'm gay. That's why I was never interested in Max Lord or anything like that. Whoa, like that's what you <laughs> yeah, need. Yeah, I don't know. I must be gay if I'm not interested in this fucking gross megalomaniac. Yeah, rapey douche. Yeah. So I guess Hank is sort of the Giles character in a way. Are we casting Buffy for Supergirl? No, no, no. I'm, no, I'm, yeah, I'm just. I was just making an observation. I was making more parallels, I guess, to to the structure of the show being sort of in the in the Joss Whedon template. He seems like less of a resource, though. 
Yeah. Like, the thing about Giles is that Giles, I mean, this isn't true always, yeah. but he never needed help. He was he was the like helper always. Right. And it seems like Hank is not so, you know, he needs help. Right. Like yeah. he's flawed. Not that Giles isn't flawed, but you know, right. from the percep- perspective of like a-, a teenage girl in high school. Yeah. He's, you know, a grown-up and grown-ups don't have issues. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. Where I guess Hank at the moment, where we're at, is he's a metaphor for being a closeted homosexual. Yeah, I guess so. Because it's sort of like Kara says, after I came out and was was able to be myself, it was, you know, my life got way better. Right. And he's like, well, that's your reality, you know, which is is a total like coming out isn't going to be good for everybody. Well, and also he sort of talks about how she's an easier pill to swallow because she's this cute blonde girl. Yeah, whereas he would be a black man. Well, he's a scary monster, but... Yeah, but but the metaphor being like, it would be harder for a black man to come out as gay than Mm -hmm. than a a cute blonde girl. Yeah. White girl. So that's like the only kind of times there's like sort of heavy handedness about it because they're speaking about it in in metaphor. You know, it's it's subtle. What was the other show recently where we're like, oh yeah, this is all a giant metaphor for being gay. And it was like super obvious. Maybe it was one of the Enterprise episodes. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. And it was super heavy handed. And, and, and it was also like a metaphor. Was it the one with where, what's her name? Is that guy wants her to stay on the planet with him? Oh, maybe. I don't know. So out of the two, Gotham or Supergirl, what's your, what's your, what's your favorite? Oh, I like Gotham better. Yeah. I don't really care about Supergirl. No, like I'm maybe I will it. eventually. Like it's fine. Yeah. But like if I go and leave the room to do something, I don't really I, care if it gets paused. There's not as much story going on in any episode of like there's the the action sequences are way longer. Uh, I don't really care the, about the what's happening. The interconnecting yeah, the interconnecting bits are, are because a lot it's less. light. Yeah, it, you know it means that like the stakes are lower. Yeah, I don't really care about the characters in the same way. I mean, maybe I will. Maybe yeah. that'll become more important to me. We're and that's it's not fair to compare because yeah. we're so we've just started Supergirl and yeah. We've watched two seasons of uh, the other yeah. show. Yeah. I think uh, Supergirl herself is really good. Clarissa Flockhart's really good. Yeah, lots of The good rest of the cast. I don't like Passable. Ben. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, like Jimmy Olsen's passable. What's her face? Lane. Oh, God. She's like, meh. Alex is all right. Astra is okay. Yawn. You know, yeah, you know, no. You it's... know, they're all like, whereas in Gotham, it's like every single actor is brilliant pretty much pretty much i don't know i can't even think of anybody like who sort of drops the ball well, i guess like victor freeze is a bit boring yeah um but he's in like two episodes yeah <laughs> i think that's part of it too is 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 people are not carrying so much yeah yeah well penguin is so yeah and that's yeah. the best and i guess they're they're in, in sort of this uh, this flamboyantly campy world where if they are chewing the scenery a little bit, it kind of works mm-hmm. in a way that it wouldn't doesn't work. Well, maybe certainly in... with with Jim, yeah, that's important because he is kind of like I think. And you said this, I said at the beginning that I liked him, and you were like, "Oh, really? I didn't really like him at the beginning." And he is kind of one dimensional in a way, or yeah. or something. But yeah. like you said, like it works with it works with the character mm-hmm. and sort of the world. Yeah, and it doesn't really matter because he's just the straight man. Yeah, he's the foil. Yeah. Yeah. First half of the season one, he's kind of very much the main character. And then they sort of draw him back and bring the other characters forward a bit Mm -hmm. more as it goes on. Because by season two, they realize what people want to watch is wacky villains. Mm -hmm. You know, the the straight man and even Bruce Wayne. People don't want to see that so much. Oh, I like the Bruce Wayne storyline. I I like it, but I'm glad that they defocused it a little bit from season one well because it means that it's kind of like game of thrones when there's all these sort of storylines going on but just as you're sort of getting your fill of one they go to another one yeah yeah exactly and leave you wanting more and there's enough yeah there's enough of them and i guess Mm -hmm. i guess we and supergirl could have been as good a show if it wasn't just only supergirl 
That's yeah. the only storyline going on. And a little bit of like her, her aunt's well, storyline and, and Hank's storyline kind of going on, but but only through her. But Supergirl yeah. doesn't really have anything going on. Like yeah. what are her... Yeah, what's refreshing is that she Who just wants she? to be... What's she like? She just wants to be a, a hero. And yeah. it's refreshing to have a hero that just wants to be a hero. And it's like, oh, thank God, finally. Right. They're not yeah. like, oh, oh I, I just don't want to be a hero. I don't want this burden placed upon yeah. me. It's not fair. And she's just like, no, give me the burden. Why are you letting me have the burden? Mm-hmm. Everyone else is like not trying to not let her have the burden. Right. And so that's re- refreshing. But it is kind of like, well, what's the conflict here in this? Mm-hmm. She seems to be trying not to like become angry and kill people uh, yeah. and then give in to that rage. But other than that, it's sort of like, yeah, you're right. There's no real story about Cara Danvers. It's very you know. like surface. That yeah. whole show is very surface. And it, it could just be that it's early on and yeah. it hasn't really hit its stride yet. And mm-hmm. I mean, it's still good. Yeah. Cause it almost not- would have been interesting if they had done it like the Gotham and started it set on Krypton. And, and it was uh, like Krypton is, is the most boring fucking thing in the world to me. Well, I think it could have been interesting. Like it's not interesting the way it has been done. Mm-hmm. But they could have done it sort of interesting with the whole environmental apocalypse thing. Oh, that's heavy-handed. That is super heavy-handed. And it could have been an interesting kind of Game of Thronesy kind of thing. But yeah, maybe maybe well, there's I not enough there the, to. Uh, I don't think that the solution is for everything yeah. to do with Game of Thrones. Like Game of Thrones has lots of problems. No, I didn't mean. I didn't mean like Game of Thrones is great, and that's, I just meant it, the the political courtly drama kind of thing, as opposed to mm-hmm. yeah. I don't want more of that. But there needs to be more going on in yeah. Supergirl, other yeah. than just Supergirl's sort of. And there needs to be some way to ca- to make you care about it because I don't yeah. really care about anything yet. Yeah, I guess. But I'm holding out hope. <laughs> Here's a further appeal for you. I need supporters for this website, this this simply syndicated dot com thing, this podcast network you've been listening to. We don't have ads, you see, but it takes money to run this and and keep me willing to do it. So I need you to go to simply syndicated dot com slash everything and sign up to supporters with just six pounds a month, which is incredible. Uh, we appreciate it so much. It's awesome that you guys that already do it, and we, you know, need every little bit we can get uh, to to help us out. So if you go there, simply syndicated.com slash everything, it's six pounds a month to support us, and you get simply everything in return, which is our entire back catalogue of sort of 11 years worth of shows and exclusive content. Alternatively, we've got a Patreon, which is patreon.com slash simply syndicated. That's a $3 a month support donation and i've been posting some exclusive content on there as well so that's uh might be more up your alley or failing that we actually just have a paypal button where you can uh, give us a little tip throw us something in the jar so to speak and you'll find the link to that at the bottom of simply syndicated.com i'm wolverine i'm wolverine i'm saber tooth i'm saber tooth <laughs> i used to be better at this uh, yeah. Well, I'm Wolverine! <laughs> I'm Saber Deuce! <laughs> oh, that's what we should have named our baby. Raby Douche. <laughs> Sounds, it's a cute sounding name. Yeah. Too bad it means bad things. <laughs> Otherwise. Yeah. Raby Douche! <laughs> Supergirl made out of cheese and bologna. <laughs> Supergirl made out of cheese and bologna. Fighting for her life with the rubber knife. That's the call of Supergirl. Supergirl made out of cheese <laughs> and bologna. Supergirl. You know what's annoying about this? Is that I'm singing that song? No, that about a quarter of the leaves have fallen at this point and so this is but like they're going to portugal yeah so they have to do it now yeah more than a quarter of the leaves have fallen i guess i guess like most of our leaves come from probably the tree across the street 
That tree's almost all fallen. Okay. I guess I haven't really looked. I would say it's five sixths of the leaves have fallen. I haven't looked up in a long time. Super. Is it a cheese and baloney? Super. Let's have a cupcake. Okay. Could you get them, please? <laughs> Me? Well, I came up with the idea. Which one do you want? Red velvet, please. Pardon? Do you want me to leave you the lemon? I don't eat want it at all. Pause this. Pause this. Pause this. Pause this. <laughs>